Excellent. Because it's interesting. Exactly, exactly. I'm worth watching. But uh, today we're, we're doing energy harvesting, and I do have a little bit of energy harvesting experience to share, and I'm going to share it with you. But before that, I'm going to tell you where I'm coming from. Uh, I have spare time. That's amazing. And in my spare time, I like to ask questions that no one else asked, and questions that no one really needs the answer for. Uh, for example, uh, recently I asked the question, can you replace a light bulb using a drone when it's too high up? Uh, or in the fever of smart everything, you know, smart thermometers, uh, kettles, tea kettles that can tweet, do we need a smart pen? Uh, both of these are on my YouTube channel. You can watch them at your leisure. If you're really curious, I'll, I'll spoil that uh, actually with the light bulb thing. Yes. Yes, you actually can. Isn't, isn't, isn't that amazing? Yeah, and for the pen thing, you're just going to have to go and see it on YouTube yourself. Uh, but today, energy harvesting, right? And the question that I asked myself recently is, you know, cows and chickens, they get to walk around and see the world before they get eaten, but potatoes don't. Potatoes live in a box. They never see the world. They never travel. So can we make a potato travel by itself? Very important question, isn't it? It's easy to put motors and wheels on a potato. You take a potato and put motors and wheels on it. But if we connect a battery, that wouldn't really be fair, right? It needs to be self-powered. You can shove an electrodes into a potato and get a little bit of power. It will power a calculator, but it won't power electric motors. If you want to go into the details, I actually did the whole scientific measurements. The MPPT is 0.4 volts. You get a whopping 0.18 milliwatts continuous for about five days, which is longer than my iPhone lives, which is kind of nice. Uh, but how do you use that 0.4 volts to power a motor? Well, you really can't, unless you get one of these chips. This is a very nice chip, and it's somewhat what the other people were talking today. It's an energy harvesting chip, or a ultra-low power boost converter with battery management for energy harvesting. So cool, from Texas Instruments. And this is a very good chip. It even comes with its own Excel sheet, where you type in the data that you have, like your potato power, your required voltage thresholds, and so on and so forth, and it designs the configuration resistors for you. So freaking convenient. Thank you, Texas Instruments. Get that chip. But to make this work, you also need a second part of the equation, which is energy storage, or a supercapacitor, something that will hold the energy that the potato is producing for a long time, I'll get to that, and then release it into the motors in a burst so they can move. This is a bit more tricky, and this is when I have some problems, and I'll show you the problems and solutions now. Uh, you go to the data sheet of these, and you will find a number that's very, very important. Leakage current at 25C maximum. So the current that's leaked through the supercap and it's wasted. Of course, this needs to be less than the current I'm producing, otherwise my potato isn't going anywhere, right? And this one has 0.06 milliamps. That's amazing, that's great. But wait, there's this free here. Let's see what that free means. Uh, this means after 72 hours of rated voltage, initial leakage can be higher. Can be higher is a euphemism for is higher by three orders of magnitude. <laughs> that really, yeah. So other, other people, other companies give you a chart for leakage versus hours, and it starts at 100 hours. And you can see by the shape what happens in the first couple of hours. It just goes whoop. Uh, but that's okay, because these two supercaps, they aren't designed for energy harvesting. These are designed for smoothing high currents or as a backup power when you lose your main power source. Uh, you can see it in their typical applications. I also love to point out that in typical ap applications, they say consumer and industrial electronics. Why do they say that? Of course I'm not going to put it in a salad. Of course it's an electronic device. It will be used in an electronic device. Brilliant. You'll find a different one which has a much better, this, this one's actually designed for energy harvesting. It has much less leakage, but then again, it has a high uh, equivalent series resistance, so it can't run the motors. It's not powerful enough. So that's the moment where I have all of these. None of them work. And I just thought, let's put the data sheets aside and let's think intuition. Lower voltage means less leakage. What if we overspec the cap, put a 5 volt one, even if I need just 2 volts, and see how, less, how little it leaks. And you know what? It's amazing, but with that, it actually worked. Ta-da! My timing was bad. There you go. <laughs> so I actually have... 
I have Pontus with me. I have Pontus with me. His name is Pontus, by the way. Pontus the potato. You can pet him. You can watch him for like 25 minutes, and then it will travel eight centimeters. Thank you.